let's talk, let's talk, let's talk with a blowhawk. I chat, I sing, I have lots of fun, I will talk to anyone. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk with a blowhawk. That was me! Hello and welcome back to this week's episode. I'm your host, Albert Clohawk, and today we're joined by a very, very special guest. This lady is a television and radio presenter, and she's Welsh. She's also an actress, a voiceover artist, and a journalist. For most people, she'll be known as a meteorologist. She's won awards for being the best weather presenter. She's even won Rear the Year. <laughs> Please welcome my special guest, Sean Lloyd. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Oh, it's great to have you on my show. Now, Sean, I would start off with a really tricky question. So, is that okay with you? Fine by me. What's your favourite type of weather? Ah, you're right, it is a difficult one. I think I like a beautiful spring day where the sun's not too hot but just warm enough for me to take my book and read on the balcony. Say about, oh, I don't know, 20 degrees with blue skies. What about you, Albert? Have you got a favourite weather? I love a good storm. Sometimes when they hit the rocks, it makes a big boom. And when it's cloudy and I see thunder, it's so exciting and beautiful. So, Sean, tell me, what do you want to be when you were growing up? Ah, I wanted to be a lot of things. Uh, at one time, I wanted to work in Marks and Spencer's because I loved the food there. But more than anything, I wanted to be a lawyer. When did you get interested in the weather? To be honest, Albert, I've always been interested in the weather because I like clothes, I like fashion, and I think anyone who likes fashion always wants to know what the weather forecast is. So I suppose the true answer to that is probably from about the age of... 10, 12, something like that. My sister lives in France and every time we talk to each other, we always compare British weather with French weather. That's always the opening of the conversation for at least five minutes. I like to talk with my friends about the weather too. How did you become a meteorologist? This is an interesting one. I was a journalist, a news journalist and set upon that path. And then I ended up working with the Met Office doing a documentary about big, dramatic weather. And I like working with them. They persuaded me to screen test for being a weather presenter for the ITV News. So I was dragged screaming and kicking into the studio. I did the screen test and um, I actually think I was about the only one who could talk for three minutes without drying up. So they offered me the job. And I guess the rest is history. That was the way I became a meteorologist, but of course there are other ways of doing it, like going to university and studying a science, chemistry, maths, computing, your English has to be good as well, uh, or going to the Met Office College. I ended up going to the Met Office College having got the job. Oh, that's lots of hard work then. When you were presenting the weather on TV, can you tell me the process of forecasting weather? Goodness, it's quite a process getting all the data together for forecasting the weather. So basically, uh, for the evening slot, because I used to do the early evening news slot and the one after what was news at 10, we'd spend all day collecting, collating all the data, which we'd get from the Met Office headquarters, now in Exeter. And we'd have lots and lots of meetings with the chief forecasters several times a day. And then we'd have graphics as well, a graphics team, put everything together. And hey, presto, hopefully you've got a lovely weather forecast at the end of each news bulletin. Is there a lot of technology used in that work? There's a huge amount of technology involved. And I always say, if you can't do computing, you really can't do the weather. Of course, at the Met Office, we have supercomputers amongst the most powerful on Earth and they're getting more and more and more accurate all the time. So the very premise of the weather comes from the bowels of a supercomputer. So yes, there's a lot of tech involved. When you're presenting the weather, did you have to deal with a major weather event? I got away with it. Um, I didn't do a microfish because I didn't really get a major, major event. I got some very hot temperatures, some record breaking temperatures, but of course those have already been broken nowadays. Um, and that was quite exciting seeing 
the temperature climb and climb and climb, you know, to hit that ultimate record-breaking one. Uh, but we knew days in advance that that would probably happen. All the signs were there. And I was also involved in some snow incidents with, you know, a lot of snowfall. And that was interesting. But of course, the weather, even though we joke about it and we Brits are obsessed with the weather, the weather can ultimately be deadly and is a real serious concern. My dad used to live in Florida and he said there's lots of hurricanes there. Is it easy to predict which way a hurricane will go? Coming back to the tech with weather, the fact we've got the computer power and we've got lots more details and we're a lot more accurate than we used to be. You can, but you'll never get it exactly so because weather forecasting is not an exact science. You can do it up to a point and then things can veer and change. But interesting that your daddy used to live in Florida. How lovely. Can you tell me how they categorise a hurricane? I hear stuff like category three on the news, but I don't really know what it is. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I've never had to forecast a hurricane at all, of course, but I think there are about seven categories. I think I'm right in saying that. And it's according to wind speed. So a category one would be over 74 miles an hour. And then by the time you reach category five, that's the official highest one that can be. By the time you reach five, it's about something mind-blowing, like 155 miles an hour or something like that. So five official categories, but there are people who go on and say, look, there's a six and seven as well, but five is the official one. I don't know about you, but on a sunny day, I like to play in the garden. I look up in the cloud and I like to make pictures with them. Do you like doing this? If so, what kind of things have you seen in the clouds? Like you, it's just magical to look at the clouds and you always see things. It's always shifting and changing. And I love faces. You always see faces in the clouds. Maps. I always see maps. Various countries in Europe on a, you know, you think of the globe and you think of atlases. There's always a country there in the skies, isn't there? Um, and love doing so. Oh, I've never looked for countries. That's a good idea. I've seen loads. I've got a really good imagination. Talking about clouds, are clouds exactly the same or different? Ah, there are lots of different clouds. About 10 categories, but, you know, some people talk of seven, some more than 10 because there are subcategories as well. But about 10 main categories and all to do with the height of the cloud and the shape of the cloud. I don't know if you're like me, I like a fair weather cloud, and that would be a cumulus. Cumulus is the Latin for cloud. And that really means those puffy cotton wool clouds that we see floating around. You know, the ones that children always draw, they're always cumulus clouds. They're probably my favorite. Sean, I'm having loads of fun with you. I'm learning lots. I was wondering if you're up for a little game in Welsh. In Welsh? Okay. Okay, great. I'm going to show you a picture of the weather and you've got to tell me it in Welsh. I'll do my best. Let's hope I get it right. Okay, brilliant. Here we go. I've got to swap these cards around. So, first one. My hen Haylog. Well done. Next one. My hen Oyer. Awesome. And third one. My hen Stormis. And fourth one. Ah, I'm not sure of that one. My hen Wintog. And final one. My hen Buruglau. Awesome, Diolch and Val. Diolch, Albert. Thank you. It's been lots of fun talking to you, but sadly it's getting near the end of my show. But I've still got time for my quick fire questions. Are you ready? Okay. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Pasta. What celebrity would you most like to meet? Oh, Banksy, the artist Banksy. What's your favourite song to sing? Oh, the Welsh National Anthem, of course, here in Lad Van Haddai. Do you have any unusual talents? I'm great at hula hooping. 
Who's your best friend? I've got lots of best friends, about four or five. I wouldn't dare name one of them. Do you prefer McDonald's or Burger King? I've never had either. Sorry. You don't mean to be that I don't believe it. I love them both. I'm a little piglet. Wing wing. Well, thanks, Sean. I've had a lovely time in this interview. I appreciate you spending time with me today. Before you go, I have one last question. I know if you've seen them, but one day I want to see the local lights. Can you explain how it happens? My daddy knows lots of things, but he can't explain that. Ah, the beautiful Northern Lights. I was lucky enough to see them once from Lapland when I used to do How To, the programme. We did a live Christmas show there and I saw the Aurora Borealis just splendid. And basically, they're an atmospheric phenomenon um, and it results in waves of colours, beautiful colours, purples and reds and greens just dancing across the sky. And then they occur when waves of energised particles from the sun called solar winds bombard the atmosphere and resulting in this beautiful, beautiful show. One day I want to go and see them. They look so pretty. Well, thanks for being on my show, Sean. It's been so much fun chatting and I've learned lots and lots and lots. Albert, it's been such fun. All the very best to you. Bye bye, or as we say in Welsh, Daboch. Bye, Sean. Oh, wasn't she lovely? That's it for this series. Thanks so much for watching. But for now, that's me, Albert Clubhock, over and out. Bye.